Greetings to all. I would like to introduce you to two of my professional activities. I'm a urban planner, tourist planner, and also the founder of the Science of Biogeometry. My latest activity as a tourist planner was the industrialization of tourism in the Red Sea, Egypt. And we have a long history uh, of urban planning with my late father, Dr. Said Karim, who started planning in the Middle East uh, in the 50s and 60s. I worked with him since the 60s to the planning of many of the Arab capitals at the time. In biogeometry, I have sort of founded a physics of quality that deals with the life force of the earth. Geo means earth, metri measurements, bio is life force. So it's a science of life force. And for the past 50 years, we have provided uh, many environmental solutions. And so I'm speaking uh, out of experience here when I speak about uh, environmental problems. Well, okay, let's start from city planning. City planning uh, has evolved a lot since we started uh, in the 60s. Now we are building uh, AI smart cities. Now, smart cities are cropping up all over the world. They depend on information and to have the optimal uh, activities of a smart city, you would have to have the optimal information gathering of that city. So you would have sensors in every aspect of private and collective life in the city should be, uh, this information should be collected in order to uh, work out the proper solutions that are needed to run everything from the smallest to the largest in the smart city. So it is dependent on information and uh, this information will be dealt with with AI, artificial intelligence, that's the future. And so we are looking at smart cities as new utopia for the future. We started basing our designs on modern technology and what possibilities uh, of shapes and forms uh, can result from applying modern technology. So we start doing extravagant shapes that haven't been possible before that. And we look at that as the future of smart cities. Now, we have a problem there. And when I speak about a problem, I'm not really uh, criticizing, but I'm offering constructive criticism based on our ability to provide solutions. So the first thing that we are going to address in those cities is the increased amount of electromagnetic radiation in the city itself. Now, electromagnetic radiation can cause lots of health, health problems. And what we do not understand or are not willing to understand is that electricity or electromagnetic waves cause heat. So they contribute to global warming. So by building a city without cars and you think I have a zero carbon footprint, you didn't do much to the environment because the amount of electromagnetic radiation in the city will make it a death trap. People will not be able to live in that city, whether it's humans, animals or plants with time they will lose immunity and start deteriorating and by the time 
we realize that our smart cities are doing that, it will be too late and those uh, left of us will move out and our smart cities will be uh, cities that have no uh, human life in it or plant life or animal life otherwise. Now, let us address here, to understand this, let us address climate change. We are concentrating on carbon emissions as the main culprit in climate change. Well, let's look at it in a different way. Now, there are lots of carbon emissions in nature. Gases produced by animals or animal excretions or even human excretions and all that are part of nature's energy consumption. They are part of the life force of nature. So the oxygen intake, carbon dioxide emission, and then nature takes carbon dioxide and then it, it takes it because it revives it, it needs it. So it's, it's a circle where carbon plays a main role in the life force of the earth. So how come we have a problem with carbon emissions and global warming? Because the earth will only absorb, the earth and all living systems in it, will only absorb carbon emissions that have life force in them. Because through this life force, there's a life force exchange. It integrates with the earth with life force. Without life force, it's a foreign dead body. So when we produce carbon emissions in our industry, through our modern technology, we are creating carbon emissions that have no life force and they are rejected by the earth. When they come on the surface of the earth, very quickly they get, somehow they, they go into the atmosphere and produce the problems we know. So now, if those carbon emissions had life force into them, they would be absorbed into the natural process of the earth. And there is an important factor here that we have shown repeatedly in our projects that by infusing any product of modern technology, be it carbon emissions or be it electromagnetic radiation, by infusing it with our biogeometry life force solutions, we automatically get a reduction of temperature because the life force that very few people understand today and modern science doesn't even acknowledge it, life force has within it the wisdom of nature. It has the balancing aspect that makes the ideal life environment. So it will regulate temperature of the earth, will be regulated. Now, when we say we are going to supplement oil with electricity, you know, the worst thing that can happen is when we start putting politics into science. We want to concentrate on oil and then attack it. Th that's, a, a, that's a, a sort of a motivation against oil producing countries and all that. So oil in the industry, the way it's dealt with in the industry, causes global warming. I'm not saying no. But concentrating on it only and leaving electricity is a political move. So we want to go into electricity as the main energy source for the future. Our cars will be electric, our cities will be electric. We are going to create 100 times more problems than we had from oil emissions. Now, if we understand that, we will know that we are putting a bigger problem 
instead of the smaller problem. Now we have to deal with both of them. I'm not saying one of them only. So now I'm speaking from experience. We worked on several environmental projects. Two of those projects are in Switzerland. And those projects like the one in Hamburg that we did with the Swiss government and uh, uh, the Swisscom, the governmental mobile provider, uh, we dealt with environmental problems in an area that was plagued by electromagnetic radiation. And this electromagnetic radiation caused many problems. It caused infertility for cows and milk production was reduced. It caused migrating birds to leave the area and go into other uh, direction. They changed their courses. Wild animals left the forests. And then a huge amount of psychological problems, mainly aggression and a sort of depression and things like that resulted. And a lot of uh, health problems otherwise, uh, li like epilepsy increased uh, drastically in the area and all sorts of uh, problems that you find in, in any uh, modern metropolis. So, but those people didn't have it before. So we went in and infused, we used geometrical shapes that have been programmed through biogeometry to interact with life force and we use them in order to infuse this life force energetic quality into the electromagnetic emanation from the mobile towers. Now, what happened here was called a miracle at the time. 60% of health problems or health symptoms were reduced. More than 80% percent of emotional mental problems were reduced so something happened in the area uh, people instead of being aggressive the mayor came and thanked me with one word he said I've seen all the medical miracles and things like that uh, all what you're doing but I want to tell you thank you for bringing peace into my region because when the health symptoms were reduced and inner relaxation happened. The stress, release of stress made the people more friendly. They became less aggressive. So the whole psychology of the whole area changed. And that's why the people called it the miracle of Hamburg. After we did our solution, there was not one case of epileptical seizure in the whole region, as if it disappeared. The migrating birds returned, the wild animals in the forest returned, the cows started giving birth, the milk production uh, became normal. So when I'm speaking about the problems of electromagnetic radiation, I'm speaking from a positive point of view. I'm speaking out of experience that when we provide the proper solution, we can go into a future that is problem free, whether then it's the production of chemicals, whether it's our pharmaceutical industry, if we infuse pharmaceutical industry with the same energy quality we did in Hamburg, we reduce all the side effects and make them more efficient. If we put that into electricity, electricity becomes a living healing force because you're putting life force into electricity. It becomes very, very similar to the electrical uh, activity of the earth because the electromagnetic activity of the earth is a very important aspect in our life. If we didn't have it, we would die. It's part of the life force that's animating us. So if we managed to bring our man-made electromagnetic uh, waves or fields in the environment, if we manage to infuse it with life force, it will integrate automatically into nature. 
it will be absorbed and radiated as part of nature. So our projects, our smart cities, will be part of nature. And in planning smart cities, some of the ways that we will use in order to make uh, life force infuse smart cities is before we plan them, we map the life force energy grids of, of the location of the Earth. We find special power spots that have excessive life force energy. And we use this as the basic grid on which we plan the city. Then modern technology can come as an addition onto a healthy project. You know, since the dawn of humanity, communities gathered around water sources, whether it's a well or a lake or a river or sea, it was always connected to water. And water, as we know, is a carrier of life force. So life force was the essence on which communities were planned. When I go to a town like Zurich in Switzerland, Zurich is based on Roman planning. And this Roman planning was based on the life force energy grid of the area. The churches were placed in certain crossing points, the, the streets were along those uh, sort of energy uh, grid lines. And we see in Zurich with this planning that they have 1,200 water sources that are mineral water sources that have healing effects. So you go to Zurich and every few steps in town you will find mineral water coming out with a healing aspect. The whole town has been planned on those energy grids and the underground water paths of those water streams running in the rocks. It's a very special water. Even the ancient Egyptians, they planned on that. We have a fantastic uh, interaction with water in the temple we call the Osirian. The Osirian is a pre-dynastic temple we don't know how far back it goes. But this temple, as all other temples, are planned on sacred water sources. But in this special case, it's a huge water lake that goes down 900 meters. Now, the temple is, is built of granite on sandstone, and it is actually floating on the water. So imagine a lake, a sacred lake, f life force. That's an, the ultimate example of how a temple interacts with life force is the, the Osirian built on a lake where the water is pushing up and injecting the temple with life force so that the huge granite blocks somehow are floating on water. When people started digging under it, they found nothing but water. So you see, this shows you that humanity always planned whatever urban developments it has, it planned them in relation to life force. Life force is the key that will take us to the future and we don't want to neglect it, otherwise we will have no future. Thank you very much.